Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are taking care of a bunch of stuff in the kitchen on my very small homestead in Southern California. So let's get to it. So we're gonna start by getting some very large ice blocks out of these cups for our chickens. It has been in the hundreds where we live in Southern California, and so it is just incredibly hot for the chickens and their water is out there. It gets really hot, you know, in the afternoon. So what I've been doing is actually just filling up these plastic like tumbler cups or I think that I think they're tumblers. I don't know. Anyways, I fill them up with water and throw them in our freezer in the garage, which is a lifesaver, by the way. I love having an extra freezer because it just makes it a lot easier to store more food, store ice for parties and whatnot. But anyways, I store them in that freezer and then I went outside and added some of the ice blocks to the chicken's water, which I did not film here. But speaking of the chickens, we've gotten a lot of eggs and they've been kind of, you know, piling up. And once this basket gets filled, I like to then go ahead and wash all of them. And we had so many that I decided that I would be hard boiling some later as well. Unfortunately, I did notice a crack in one of the eggs, so instead of eating it ourselves and risking, you know, consuming bad bacteria, I just decided we'd feed it back to the chickens. They don't mind eating their own eggs and, you know, I don't I don't like to waste. So, that is what I typically do if a shell is possibly compromised at least for human consumption. Once the eggs kind of dried off a little bit, I put the larger ones in our plastic containers from Dollar Tree. And then I left out some of the smaller ones, the ones that our black and white hens lay. And typically I like to hard boil those. So we're gonna be filling up a pot and getting that ready to boil. I have found that this, this particular pot with like the straining insert is really nice for getting all the eggs in at the same time and getting all of them out at the same time time so that you know one isn't cooked longer than the others. So we're going to get the stove on and get that water heating up before I add the eggs. So the eggs are just currently sitting on the countertop waiting for the water to boil and while that is going we are going to cut up a loaf of sourdough sandwich bread that I had recently made. Now on this day, I believe we still had some extra bread from a previous loaf that I had made and my kids weren't eating this as quickly as they have in the past. It's funny because my family just kind of goes through these waves of like, we eat through a whole bunch of the sourdough and it seems like I can't make enough. And then I decide, okay, I got to stay on it. I'm going to make a loaf today. And then they're just not in the mood <laughs> and we have a lot of bread left over. So that kind of inspired me to slice the bread the way that I did this day. I, I sliced the beginning portion a little bit thinner, the way that we enjoy having toast and whatnot. And then the second half of the loaf, I cut really thick slices and then we're going to be cubing them up and setting them aside for now at least. And later in the evening, I will be be preparing a French toast casserole using these bread chunks so that they don't go to waste and that we can have just a really yummy meal the next morning. But by now our water is ready so one trick that I've learned just for getting easy peeled shells is to put some baking soda in the water and since there's a lot of water I'm doing like one and a half heaping spoonfuls uh, of this baking soda and adding that in before inserting all of my eggs. I have found that boiling the eggs for 17 minutes and then putting them immediately in an ice bath results in like the perfect hard-boiled egg. Occasionally we get a shell that's hard to peel off but for the most part, this method has worked very well for me. So while the eggs are boiling, we are moving on to prepping some apples for our freeze dryer. 
Now, I have shared in the past that my kids really love the apples, the freeze-dried apples from Dollar Tree, and there's a particular brand that we really liked. I appreciated how all the skin had been removed. There's like never any seeds. So I wanted to kind of resemble that same look when preparing our apples. I got cosmic apples from Walmart, and then I just cut it in half, put that half flat on the cutting board, and sliced maybe quarter inch slices. And then we're removing the skin and any seed portions, and I just really like how they turned out. And then one thing I noticed was that I could fit about one apple's worth of slices per tray, so that everything was spaced out, it wasn't gonna stick to each other and whatnot. But once they were all freeze dried and you know bone dry, they could break in half really easily. I actually weighed them out and it turns out that like half of an apple was the equivalent to one of the Dollar Tree bags. So if you don't take into account the price of the freeze dryer, which they are very expensive and you know we're blessed to have been given the opportunity to get one, but if you don't take that into account, then you know one of these apples is about a dollar. So one bag's worth from Dollar Tree, it would be 50 cents for us. So in that sense, it is cheaper to do it at home. So I feel good about uh, that decision to stop buying them from Dollar Tree and just make them ourselves. The other benefit is that, in my opinion, it's a better quality freeze-dried product because they are not going to get crushed and powdery uh, in transport. I'm going to store them in mason jars. And so I, essentially we get like all the slices are like perfect and thick and unbroken. So overall, it's just a better quality, you know, for the final product as well. So by the time I got done with this first tray of prepping for the freeze dryer, it was time to make the ice bath for our eggs and transfer them out so that they can stop cooking and cool down a bit. Then we are going to get back to preparing the apples for the freeze dryer. But now that my trays are ready, we're gonna throw them in the freeze dryer. Typically, it's a good idea to freeze them before putting them in the freeze dryer because it saves electricity. But this was kind of my test run and I'm just putting them in immediately after cutting them. And then with the remaining apples that I prepped, these trays will actually go in the freezer so that the next time I do a run of my freeze dryer, these will have already been frozen and it will cut off a few hours from the entire process. And then, like I mentioned, we're going to be chopping up the skins and the scraps and giving these to our chickens. So now that the eggs have cooled down after being boiled, I'm going to go ahead and dry them off and throw them in this container and put it in the fridge where the kids can reach it because I like to have the, you know, the healthy snacks within their reach whenever they're hungry. But here I just figured I'd show you just how easily these peel and what they look like on the inside as well. My head is in the clouds. 
Moving on, we're gonna be prepping some strawberries for the freeze dryer as well. This is another favorite of my kids. They love freeze dried strawberries, and I also use them when I make strawberry conchas. So, you know, you can blend up the freeze dried strawberries and make a powder, and it provides like your baked good with, you know, extra strawberry flavor. So, that is one way to use freeze dried strawberries. But my kids just really love snacking on them by themselves as well. So I'm starting off by washing them in a water vinegar bath and soaking them. I did get a second pack, so we will be washing another set in just a second. And then we're going to be setting these on the counter and letting them just kind of dry off before I get to cutting them later in the evening. I did also let my kids snack on some for dinner because that was kind of the break in this video was us eating and getting the kids to bed. And then now that they are in bed, I will be slicing about, a, again, a quarter inch thick slices of the strawberries and laying them on some parchment paper to get them ready for the freeze dryer. So you can see my trays are in my outdoor freezer now getting ready for probably the next day I think is when I threw them in. I just wanted them to get totally frozen so that when they go in the freeze dryer it cuts off some time. And then we are wrapping up the evening by making some French toast casserole. I wasn't really following a recipe here so I can't really provide exact measurements but essentially I grease my loaf pans, fill them up with the bread chunks, and then blend together eggs, some milk, a couple spoonfuls of sugar, some cinnamon, a splash of vanilla, and so I mix that all up and then pour that over top the bread. Really trying to get, you know, all of the top pieces coated because I'm going to be putting this in the fridge to kind of continue soaking up, but sometimes those very top pieces don't, you know, get all the way soaked. So I'm trying to coat them as best as I can. And then since I had enough, you know, eggs and bread for two loaf pans, I threw one in the freezer to use and bake on a separate day. And then the other one I placed in the fridge to then bake the following day. And these will eventually be topped with like a brown sugar cinnamon coating on top, like a crumble, which makes it even more delicious. But we're going to go ahead and check on our freeze drying process uh, as we wrap up this video. I will show you the end results in just a second, but I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video and supporting my channel. If you enjoyed today's video and it motivated you in some way, or if you just like watching things get done in the kitchen, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. That really helps my channel out. And if you guys are new here, I would love it if you stick around and subscribe. I take care of all things mom, and I'm really trying to dive into this homestead lifestyle. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.